Hi and welcome. Today we'll be creating a 2D character controller using simple physics in Unity. We'll be looking at how to move the player and how to make the player jump. And we'll also discuss the common issues that we generally face while creating a 2D character controller. Now to start with, let's use the default Unity 2D sprite as our character. So it can be a square. So we'll rename this as player. Then add in another square. Okay, this will be our platform. Now we'll increase the scale of platform in X axis by 10. Then we'll shift it down somewhere like this. Now let's go ahead and add box colliders to both of these platform and the player box collider 2D. And for the player box collider 2D. So now that we have added that, uh, player also requires a rigid body because we are going to use physics to move the player. So let's go ahead and add a rigid body 2D. That being added, if you play the game now, so the player actually falls on the platform and, and will rest on it. Now to move the player left and right, we're going to apply force depending on the player input and using the arrow keys. And we're going to limit the velocity to a maximum value. So for that, we'll be attaching a script called player controller. So let's go inside and see what this player controller script does. So for the moment part, we need a rigid body 2D and the move force. And we also require a max velocity. We'll make sure that the player is not moving at a speed greater than the max velocity. Now in our start function, we'll get the rigid body component. And once you have the rigid body component, inside the fix update, we'll call player move. So since this is a physics function and we are using force to move the game object, we'll be using fixed update. And inside the player move, we are just checking if the velocity magnitude is less than the maximum velocity. If so, we'll add a force, which will be vector two dot right, that is in the X axis. And that multiplied with move force and input in the horizontal axis from the keyboard. So input.get access horizontal will give you the left and right arrows of the keyboard. So you can go back and test this theory. So before moving the player, we have to give it a move force. So let's give it a move force of 10. So now if we move the player, we are able to move it. So if you want the player to stop immediately when we release the key, you can increase the linear drag. You can play around with the linear drag and the move force to get a value that basically makes your player movement natural. So in this case, linear drag of one and the move force of 10 seems to be okay. Now comes for the vertical movement, that is jump. So we are going to see that if the player presses the space bar, then the player should be able to jump. So for that, we have the jump script. You can also execute the jump script inside the fixed update. But since we are using the get key down function, uh, sometimes the fixed update misses it and we'll be pressing the space bar and the player will not be able to jump. So for that, we have moved it to the update. So if you're not facing that issue, you can very well execute this inside a fixed update. Now we're also doing a ground check and for ground check, we're going to cast a box from the center of the player to almost to the end of the player and see if the player is actually touching a layer called ground. And if that is happening, then the ground check function will basically return true. You can see the ground check function here. So it is basically doing a box cast from the transform dot position based on the box size in the downward direction up to a max distance. And it is also taking in a layer mask. So basically if the object that it hits is in this layer mask, then it will return true or else it will return false. Now, in order to visualize this, we are using this on draw gizmos function. So it will draw a box of size of color green at the max distance that we have specified. So the box that appears in your scene will be the maximum distance to which the box cast will happen. So if you go back to Unity now, and inside the player, if you set the box size, let's set it to one, one, and you have to go to the scene view to see it. So this is basically covering the whole player. So we don't want that. So we'll just make it 0.8 and in the Y, 0.8. Actually, the Y size of the box can be even smaller, so we can just set it to 0.2. Now we'll set a max distance, that is 0.5. So as you can see, it is just outside the player, so it will box cast from the center point to this position. And if at this position the box is hitting a ground, 
that means the player is grounded otherwise the player is not grounded. now if you want more details about ground check and box cast we have a separate tutorial for that i'll leave the link in the description so you can use that to watch that video this being said let's set a jump force of 10 and let's play the game now if you press the space bar the player is not able to jump because we have to set the platform layer to ground and also in our player we have to select the layer mask as ground so now everything should work yeah I press the space bar when on the platform the player is able to jump in the air it is not able to jump so this covers the basic movement and jump of the player now let's get into some issues that we commonly face using the 2d character control now the first issue that we face is when you have multiple platforms let's say duplicate this then we'll move this a little bit to the right somewhere like this and move it a little bit up so there's a small difference like the player should be able to move but the player might also get stuck so this might happen when you're procedurally generating planes so now if you hit on the play button the player goes hits and tumbles so we don't want this happening so for that we have to do two things one is select your player and inside the rigid body there's a constraint called freeze rotation so we don't want the player to rotate in the z-axis so first that is done next in our player we'll use a capsule collider in place of a box collider here we have used a uh, square but in a general case it will be a humanoid right so that mostly a capsule collider will work, work much better than a box collider so we'll remove the box collider from here and we'll add a capsule collider 2d yeah remember it's 2d so we want it to move up yeah, it's better to keep it here so let's see if the shape of the capsule collider is circle so that means this part of the player will basically go inside but that wouldn't be a problem if you have a human character here so now if we go to the game let's play it so if you move the player you can see the player was able to move across even with a small bump so using capsule collider actually solves a lot of problems like this and if you're not able to add a capsule collider to your player then you can add it to the platform so it's better to use a capsule collider in place of box colliders wherever possible now the second issue comes it won't come if you're using a force to move the game object but if you're using a velocity to move the game object then it, the issue might come up like when the when you're able to when you're going to jump the player sometimes gets stuck on the side of the platform like this now this might happen because of two reasons one the collider of the player is actually getting entangled like it, it will not happen if you're using a capsule collider or a box collider but it might happen if you're using a polygon collider so polygon colliders have irregular shapes and some irregular shape might get stuck here so that is one issue and the second issue is friction between the player and the platform is so high that the gravity is not able to pull the player down now to solve this what you can do is just select the platform all the platforms if you want and in the material add a physics material now to create a physics 2d material just go to create and go to 2d and you have to go physics material 2d there's also a normal physics material which is used for 3d so make sure you don't create that you have to create a 2d physics material and inside that you have to set the friction to zero and the bounciness to zero if you want you can use the bounciness depending on your requirement so once that is done just select the platform and under the collider you'll have a material option just drag and drop a physics material onto it that's it this was the basics of creating a 2d character controller inside unity the script is available on Vinix studio the link is there in the description so you can just download it and start moving your player and if you have any other questions feel free to leave them in the comment box below thank you and see you in the next tutorial thanks for watching don't forget to like subscribe and share